I'm doing it. I'm doing it. 1,000 feet of climbing and five miles on Vermont's Route 9 and I reached the town of Marlboro where there is a viewing deck offering visitors the well-known 100 mile view. From here one can see the Berkshire Hills of New Hampshire including Mount Monotnock. This section of Route 9 I am riding on is called the Molly Stark Byway and it extends to 48 miles from the towns of Brattleboro and Bennington. Continuing westward towards Bennington on the Molly Stark Byway, I ride into the historic town of Wilmington. This quaint mountain town was buzzing with traffic and visitors enjoying the many shops, inns and restaurants. With the Green Mountain National Forest and 2,000 more feet of climbing ahead of me, I quickly zigzag through Wilmington's busy and get back on the Molly Stark Byway shoulder. a blast. I thought I was gonna have to climb a lot more. I probably do still but I'm not sure. I don't want to stop and look but I got a nice shoulder now. A few miles after passing through Wilmington I ride past Harriman Reservoir. The views along this stretch of Route 9 are beyond spectacular. I slow down and even stop several times to gather memories with my camera before continuing on. The towns of Searsburg and Woodford are a few miles ahead of me and I'll soon be facing the longest, most steepest climb of my day. Went from climbing to dropping and now a pretty good headwind. I gotta pedal into it for sure, even downhill. I'm getting all the tough variables out of the way. So when I get some tailwind and some uh, more down hills, I can just like live them up. The Green Mountains of Vermont with their highest peak mountain Mansfield at 4,395 feet elevation are part of the Greater Appalachian Mountain Range which stretches from Quebec, Canada to the state of Alabama. They are called the Green Mountains because even during winter the trees can hide snowfall and still appear green. This mountain range is approximately 250 miles long running from north to south from the borders of Massachusetts and Quebec. The sections that are part of the states of Massachusetts and Connecticut are called the Berkshires while the Quebec sections are called the Sutton Mountains. I now face this day's greatest challenge having to climb the town of Woodford's Prospect Mountain. This long and mostly steep incline was plenty difficult and it took lots of resolve and output to reach the top. I don't know if you guys can see it, but that's that next hill coming up. I'm feeling a little bit in the groove now, so I'm cool with it, but... It's taking a ton of effort on my part. Oh man, I've stopped many times climbing today just to let the burn on my legs sort of dissipate before I can get back on it. And that really is the key to climbing to uh, not push yourself until there's injury just whenever you feel it, the burn just t stop and wait until blood flows back and out of your you know through your muscles and then get back to it and go climb again you, right away you feel good for a while and then you stop and then you keep going and before I know it I'll be cranking over these things without even thinking about it I'm doing it again. Woo. I'm listening to Nirvana just to get me up here. Stop number one. Oh, it's a long, long hill. I think it's hard to tell when you're uh, looking up videos. It's uh, more striking when you're here. I still got a little ways to go here. Or I don't know because it's a left turn and you can't see how far it goes.
just in case I hadn't said it before, this is uh, my fourth day since eight months off the bike. So please don't judge me yet. I gotta get conditioned back to uh, shape, climbing shape. Let's keep doing it. It's the only way. Second stop. Number three. I'm almost there though. I can see it. I just gotta finish it up. <laughs> oh my gosh. Vermont has officially kicked my butt. It's not even kicking my butt, it's already done it. I got a headwind and some majorly steep hills. I'm almost there though, just one more push and I'll get a downhill and can uh, clear out a lot like the cast out of my legs. <laughs> Serious headwind up at the top, but I'm at the top. Whoa! One more! They're never ending. Destroyed. This has got to be the last one. I, I don't know. I hope so. Oh man. It's gotta be it. It's gotta be the last one. If not, I'm growing wings. All right, I think I did it. Let's see if we can uh, get a steady down here for a little while. I could use the rest, but I'm glad I did that. I mean, I think that's gonna, that's the kind of climbing that's gonna raise my, uh, my bar. Once I reach the top of Prospect Mountain, I ride several smooth graded miles and make my way to one of the most beautiful downhills. This downhill is part of 15 miles of Route 9 that traverses through the Green Mountain National Forest, including Vermont's largest undeveloped land, the massive Glastonbury Wilderness. That wasn't too bad. I pedal a few more light climbs and take a well-deserved water break before riding past the town of Woodford. At this point I'm exhausted but know that a speedy descent into Bennington is soon coming my way. I get myself mentally ready as I love to go fast and even though I keep my fingers on my brake levers as I drop fast descents, I tend to avoid ever tapping on them. There is that moment when the steepest part of the hill accelerates you into cycling nirvana and you feel as if you're one with your bike and the road below you. It's this connectivity that satisfies me in every way and allows me to feel most alive. Here is the entire uninterrupted Prospect Mountain descent. The beauty of the Green Mountains National Forest in its full display and I hope to share with you what it feels like to drop on one of these mountains at average miles per hour speeds in the mid 30s with a top speed of 42 for over 5 minutes.
I'm quickly enveloped in tall, thick, lush forest and more striking scenery continues to develop. So far the grade is steady, but as soon as I start seeing road signs warning truckers of tipping over danger and whatnot, I prepare for a faster grade and sharper turns. Another flashing road sign comes up warning truckers of a ramp ahead in case they lose their brakes or control of their rigs during their descent. I know now that the best of this downhill is yet to come and sure enough just after this road sign the grade increases and I start picking up speed around this right turn. I reach 42 miles per hour and I'm as euphoric as can be as I reach road construction signs and barrels telling the traffic to yield into one single lane. I take the full lane and keep my downhill position on my bike pressing ahead around a superb semi-blind right turn before the steep grade of Prospect Mountain dissipates and I get back on the shoulder riding along Stamford Stream. Dropping on these mountains at these speeds is without doubt a dangerous affair. Bicycle accidents are not kind and many different dangers such as missed divots on the road, a sudden wildlife crossing or any malfunction on your bike can cause one to lose control and suffer likely serious injury. I know the inherent risks involved and do all I can to mediate these possible dangers so I can enjoy these amazing opportunities. 42! I was flying! Oh man, what a blast. I'm back. I love screaming down these mountains. What a beautiful drop. And I was taking these rides to the blind. It was like pretty cool.